On this hunt, my buddy Remy Warren and I are heading south into old Mexico to chase coos deer. He's got something spotted. I'm onto a nice buck now, man. Conditions are ideal. It's peak rut. These mysterious deer are going to be out and about playing their annual round of grab ass. My plan is to take it easy and enjoy the sun, but Remy's doing things the hard way with a bow. You got your work cut out for you with that bow and arrow, dude. It's not going to be easy. This guy has got blistered feet in his very near future. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. It's off season in the States, which for me means a trip out of the country to one of my favorite hunting spots, Sonora, Mexico. Here on this ranch, you can pitch your camp where a bunch of ridge lines come together, and there's prime hunting in every direction. Man, we're like surrounded by sweet coos deer country up here, man. I brought along my friend Remy Warren, a fine, fine hunter and a great guy to travel with. While my own personal credo holds that bows are best used when rifles aren't allowed, Remy's gonna willingly subject himself to an archery hunt that might become an arduous task. Coos deer are skittish creatures with sharp instincts, and the ground is covered in lava rock. It's like trying to creep around on a floor covered in tortilla chips. Working in our favor is the fact that we time this hunt to coincide with peak rut. These otherwise shy deer abandon some of their inhibitions and show themselves, even if they do it in their own bashful little coos deer way. Looking at these deer that far away, man, you got your work cut out for you with that yeah. bow and arrow, dude. <laughs> it's not gonna be easy. No, when you told me you were coming with a bow, I got an empty, man. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm pretty sure coos deer are about the hardest thing you can kill with a bow. But... Yeah, because the ground's noisy. It's noisy and it's more open here, so, and they've got great eyesight. Our first morning out, we lock onto a nice buck bedded on a mostly open hillside. Knowing that Remy needs every chance he can get, we plan accordingly. I'm gonna go down and try to hunt that buck. And then, you know, if it if it doesn't work out or whatever, I'm gonna keep going up that ridge. Yep. And then just hunt like all that stuff in front of us the rest of the day. I'll kind of acquiesce to you and let you do your thing as much as you want, you know? Yeah. I figure what'll happen is I'll chase them all to you, and then you just flock shoot them as they yeah, run by. You just by. keep moving, man. <laughs> I'll be, you don't have to worry about deer being bedded, because I'm just going to keep bumping them out of their beds all day long. Remy bolts across the canyon to climb the opposing slopes where we spotted the earlier buck. He's as prepared as you can get. Decoy, rattling antlers, calls, stalking slippers, previous coos deer experience. He's basically a sporting goods store and a shelf of how-to books mounted on a pair of hiking boots. The major challenge he faces is getting right up into the animal's personal space. There's a huge difference between a coos at 400 yards and a coos at 40. While Remy works to get close, I'm having a blast just picking out deer on the distant mountainsides. I got one over here that's gotta be a buck. There's another buck, he's just cruising around, man. Where I grew up in Western Michigan, you could hunt all season and not see half as many bucks. I just found the eighth buck I've seen this morning. This is just too much fun out here. There's too many deer running around. I'm kind of weighing like, how much I'm wanting to get a coos deer with how much I'm enjoying being out looking for coos deer. And it's like this scale, you know, in your eyes, like, eh, you know. And I might like to just stay out here and look around more. Like, if you kill the deer, you can still look around, but there's something different. It's just not the same, and anyone who hunts will understand it. The looking around is much better if it's loaded with the anticipation of going after an animal. It's just part of it, you know. I like having that heightened sense of expectation that comes with being actively hunting. In all honesty, Remy's plan to spot and stalk into bow range might actually be a tad easier if it weren't mid-rut, because then the bucks would at least hold still long enough to plan and execute a stalk. Just blew a really nice buck out in front of me. 
Just as their rotting activity makes them easier to find, it makes them easier to lose. The upside, of course, is that the deer are distracted. If you're lucky, they might just make a well-timed mistake. But even here, seeing bucks isn't killing them. You gotta wait for a lot of things to all line up in the perfect way. The animal's location, its mood, the ground he's on, the wind. Everything needs to be perfect. Just too open. Too many places for them to be spread out in those open trees. And I just don't think you could ever get close. Not every time you see deer, it's something that you can stalk with the bow. You know, sometimes you just gotta be patient and wait them out until they're somewhere that you have a high percentage chance of actually getting close to them. Remy and I hunt well into the evening. Neither of us made a kill, but that's great by me. Means we can still look forward to tomorrow. Well, I'm gonna pack up. Hike back to camp, see if we'll have it with Remy. You roll some big old buck? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you finding something that, uh... I was being like a dude at Yellowstone National Park, man. I was just like passively observing wildlife. And watching. Just watching deer all day long. Bringing a bow to Mexico to hunt coos deer, probably not the smartest thing I've ever done in my life. It's just too noisy. Yeah, it's a lot of getting close, and then for it to connect is just a whole nother level. But then you now know. and then, it's frustrating to get now and then, it's just something happens. Yeah. We'll figure it out. You'll get yeah. it. I think I'm not worried. First thing in the morning, Remy and I head out in opposite directions. I'm honing in on an area with a lot of activity. Rather than watching deer from well over a mile away, I'm hoping to see some from shooting range. Remy's got a fresh plan as well. Rather than blundering around and bumping deer, he's gonna get up onto a good glass and knob and study the ground. There's a buck right here below me. 350 yards. I'm gonna just wait and watch and see what happens. I mean, that just doesn't feel right the way this hillside's so open. I think I just need to be patient on him. That's a great buck. I don't wanna push him out of here. I've got time. I feel like if I hunt him right, I'll get my chance. I just don't want to rush into it. Sometimes bow hunting is just about being patient and then moving fast when the opportunity strikes. For me, the deer are being a little cagey today. It's mid-morning and I've yet to spot any. Finally, just before noon, I get caught with my pants down almost literally. Oh, no, 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 no. Not 500 yards away, on the next ridge, I catch a glimpse of what seems to be a nice little buck. But just as quickly as I spot him, he's over the top and out of view. Damn it. It's funny, man, you do it so much time looking long distances, and all of a sudden, boom, you're right on top. Which is not how I picture this happening, but I'm gonna have to start, like, I got it in my head, this is such a long range game. I gotta start being more ready at all times. I keep, like, I just keep. I gotta be ready at all times, man. My plan now is to drop down and swing a wide arc just to see if I can flank this buck without spooking him or the does he's chasing. When I think I've maybe caught up with him, I start peeking over the ridge top to see if I can catch a glimpse. This is not a good place to poke up because there's no cover. We'd be really skylined. I'm gonna drop down, get over, take another peek up in there, see what's going on. I'm right on top of two toes. One of them's looking over here, one of them doesn't see him. I can't find that buck that was chasing them. There's that buck. That's a good buck. He's good.
tell you, when you walk up to these things, it's like unbelievable how small they are. See, he's cool looking, comes all the way back. That's like a sweet looking buck. Man, just delicate, small little gray ghost. That worked out pretty perfect. It's early afternoon. Remy's off hunting and I'm gutting and butchering a buck. Since my hunt's over, I'm gonna do a preparation for dinner that basically demands spare time. people look at venison ribs as something relegated to grinding up for burgers or sausage. Hell, I've even seen where a lot of people just throw them away. The reason, they say, is the ribs are too tough to chew when you cook them in the more usual ways. However, like other tough cuts such as shank and shoulder, the ribs can really benefit from a slow braising, which comes down to searing the meat and submerging it in water and cooking it for several hours until the meat is tender and fallen off the bone. I started with a base of sauteed onion, garlic, and chili pepper. Those, along with the juices from the meat and bones, are gonna turn the water into a stock that will give these ribs intense flavor. I got a rock on that lid now just to help keep a little extra pressure in there. I'm gonna burn this wood down so I got a lot of coals. Then I'm just gonna take this dirt and just poof, pile it on top there and smother the whole thing. Then it'll keep hot in there for a long, long time. Then you can walk away, you don't gotta worry about coming back and having burnt down your whole hunting area. Just it'll extinguish the fire and hold a lot of heat. The more dirt you put on, the better. When I'm doing this kind of thing, I put on enough dirt where when I put my hand on top of that mound, I can't feel the heat. I don't want any smoke escaping or anything. Just totally pack it down with dirt. Yeah, that should be able to sit there for hours. I think you come back in a day and it's still gonna be warm. But that'll cook it long enough for that meat to start coming off those ribs. The ribs are tough, man, but they're not so tough that they can stand up in the face of hours of simmering. They eventually give in. Remy's been sitting still all afternoon, just waiting for an opportunity to close the gap on the herd of deer down the mountain. There's a spot on this spine where they've been crossing quite a bit. That's a couple hundred yards further down. So I'm gonna go check it out right now. I'm just gonna scout it out. But as he heads down toward what appears to be the focal point of some local deer activity, he gets a surprise that upsets the hunt. Right up on the hill. It's a doe, 45 yards. She's gonna get ready in case a buck follows her. that the spooked doe alarmed the bucks. Remy pulls back uphill. Man, okay. time to go back up to the top. That was exciting. So close yet so far away. Maybe tomorrow.
The ribs have been brazing underground for a few hours now, and it's time to dig them up. I always feel like an archaeologist when I do this. You're never quite sure if what you dig up is going to be worthless or priceless. The ribs turned out tender and full of flavor. Mm, pretty good. I think it's really good. It's small consolation for Remy, who has one last chance tomorrow to try and get his deer. I still think you're stupid. I am stupid. I brought a bow to a Mexican <laughs> gunfight. Yeah. <laughs>
I suppose what I'm saying, at the risk of sounding like an old man, is that it takes tenacity to thrive in this world. You need to show up in life and not be afraid to stay late. It worked for Remy, it'll work for you.